Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about image alignment, which is also referred to as image registration. Uh, image alignment is used in many applications such as building panoramic uh, images from multiple photos or constructing HDR photos from multiple images taken at different exposures. It's also used in the medical field for comparing digital scans to highlight small changes between images. Uh, so in this particular example, we're going to introduce the topic by showing how we can perform document alignment. Uh, the image uh, on the left here uh, is an image of a form that's been printed out and filled out by hand and placed on a table. And the goal here is to uh, transform that image to an image uh, on the right that would align with the original template of the form and therefore make optical character recognition of this form a, a much easier task. So that's a preview of what we're going to talk about. So first let's scroll down here a little bit and uh, talk about some of the theory of transformations. So on the left here, we have an original image in the shape of a square. And one of the simplest transformations we can make is a translation, which is simply a shifting of the pixel coordinates in the original image uh, to the translated image as shown here. And then beyond that, we have Euclidean transformations, which now include rotation. Uh, but notice that the size and shape of the original image has been preserved. And then uh, further to the right, we have affine transformations, which encompass Euclidean transformations, but also include shear and scale changes. So now we have some distortion, but notice that parallel lines remain parallel. And finally, we have the homography, which is the most general transformation for 2D images, which allows us to transform the original square into an arbitrary quadrilateral. And the reason this is useful and interesting is that it allows us to warp an image to effectively change its perspective. So just as a more concrete example, let's scroll down to this next section where we show two images of the same book taken from different perspectives. Here we're interested in talking about the homography between these two images, and specifically for the 2D plane, in each image is represented by the front cover of the book. So if we can identify at least four points in both images that correspond to the same physical location on the front cover of the book, then we can compute the homography that relates these two images. So for example, we've identified four different points in both images that we've color coded that represent the same points on the physical book, and therefore we call these points corresponding points since they correspond to the same physical location, but are obviously represented by a different set of pixel coordinates in each image. Uh, so given we have a set of points like these, we could simply call an OpenCV function to compute the homography and then apply the homography as a transformation to the image on the left, for example, uh, to effectively change its perspective to look like the image on the right. Uh, just keep in mind that uh, four points is a minimum required, and in practice we would want to find many more corresponding points, uh, but thankfully uh, there are other functions in OpenCV that enable us to do uh, just that. So we'll take a look at those details further uh, below in this notebook, and uh, just getting back to the document alignment example, let's start taking a look uh, at the actual code. Uh, so here on lines uh, two through three, we're just importing some required modules. And then the very uh, next thing we're going to do is simply read in the images of the um, template form and also the scan form. So we have those available to us. And uh, in this next uh, section here, we're simply displaying both of those images. So the, uh, we've got the original form here on the left and then the um, photo of the form that we've filled out on the table and, and taken a photograph of. And again, our goal is to take this image and apply homography to it so that it lines up with this uh, form here on the left. So let's see how to do that. Uh, the very first step in this process is finding uh, uh, some number of key points in both images. And uh, there's not a lot of code here, but there's a lot going on that needs uh, some explanation. So uh, lines two and three here are simply converting uh, the images that we read into grayscale. And the reason for that is that the, the code that follows that is performing some feature extraction on these images only requires a grayscale representation of the image. And then there's this, uh, this code right here uh, that is configuring an orb object from this orb create class. So if you're not familiar with uh, image features and feature extraction in computer vision, uh, just know that uh, various algorithms have been invented over the years to extract uh, what we call features from images. And uh, the objective there is to try to extract meaningful information that is contextually um, related to the, uh, the image itself. So typically we're looking for uh, edges and corners and uh, uh, 
texture in images, and we uh, people have been tried to invent various ways to uh, compactly represent that information. So orb features are one way to do that, and they're available in OpenCV. So here we're going to create this orb object, and then we're going to use that object to detect and compute uh, key points and descriptors for each of the uh, images. So let's just go over this. Um, each of these call, each of these function calls returns a list of key points and a list of associated descriptors. So the key points are interesting features in each image that are usually associated with some sharp edge or corner. And um, they're described by uh, a set of pixel coordinates that describe the location of the, of the key point, the size of the key point, in other words, the scale of the key point, and then also uh, the orientation of the key point. And then uh, there's an associated list of descriptors for each key point, and each descriptor is actually a vector of some information that describes the region around the key point, which effectively acts as a, a signature for that key point. So it's a, it's a vector representation of the pixel information around the key point. And the idea here is that uh, if we're looking for uh, the same key point in both images, we can try to use the descriptors uh, to match them up. So let's, uh, let's scroll down here a bit further and uh, just talk about uh, these two uh, display. So we've we've calculated the uh, we've computed rather the um, key points and descriptors for each image, and here in these figures we're um, displaying just the key points. So the key points are the um, where all these red circles are key points. The uh, center of the circle is the location of the key point. The uh, size of the circle represents the scale of the key point, and then the the line connecting the center of the circle to the outside of the circle represents the orientation of the key point. So those details um, aren't uh, terribly important for this demonstration. I just wanted to point out that all these red circles represent the, the key points. But associated with each of these key points is a um, vector representation of the image patch at that key point, which we're not displaying. But uh, it's the uh, um, descriptors that are actually used to match up these key points. So notice that on the figure on the left, there's all these red circles here on the form. And on the figure to the right, there's um, a lot of red circles in regions on the form that aren't even located here on the left. So um, the list of key points for figure one and the list of key points for figure two are, um, they're overlapping, but certainly there's probably some key points in both images that maybe are the same. And those are the ones that we're gonna try to um, try to find so that we can compute the homography between these two um, image representations. So, um, so that's the introduction to key points. And so now let's scroll down here a bit further and talk about how we match those key points. So the first step in this matching process is to create a matcher object by calling this descriptor matcher underscore create function. And we pass to that function some configurations uh, that indicate the type of uh, matching algorithm we're gonna use, which is brute force. And then also uh, the metric for computing the distance between the descriptors, uh, which is a Hamming uh, metric, a distance measure. And that's because the descriptors for uh, orb are binary strings, so we therefore require a Hamming uh, metric uh, for that purpose. And then, uh, so we use that matcher object to call the match function, uh, which then attempts to um, provide a list of the uh, best matches associated with those list of descriptors. And so now we get a data structure back here uh, that contains the list of matches um, from the key points that we uh, determined up above. And then once we get that list, we're going to sort the list uh, based on the distance uh, between the uh, various descriptors. And then uh, on lines uh, 9 and 10 here, we're going to uh, further uh, limit that to the top 10% of the matches returned by uh, the matching uh, function here. And we're going to use that now to draw the matches uh, in this code below, shown here in the image. So uh, we're calling this draw matches function. And we're going to pass in the key points for image one, as well as uh, the image, and the same for image two, as well as this uh, filtered list of matches computed above. And if you uh, take a look at these two images, you can see that several key points in this image match the key points in this image. For example, on in the form over here, there's a, there's a little image of a person. And further down here, it looks like an image of a house. And you can see that there were several key points in both images 
that were in that local region. And then this matching function determined that, yes, there were several here on this form that matched this form. In other words, the descriptors matched close enough for us to call that a, a match. And so now we have a set of corresponding key points, right? Uh, but notice here, for example, right down here, this lavender line is going up to some other location on the form to the right. So that's that's not a match, but it, it turned out that the descriptor for the key point here and the descriptor for the key point here were very close, coincidentally, and so it decided that that was a match. It's okay to have some false positives here. The important thing is that we have an overwhelming number of actual matches, which will allow us to compute uh, a homography. So then the final uh, couple of steps here in the uh, notebook are to um, first compute the homography. Uh, so to do that, we simply call this find homography function here and pass it uh, both sets of key points that have been filtered uh, by the matching process above. And then there's an optional uh, argument here, which is the algorithm that's going to be used uh, to compute the homography. And uh, here we're indicating the uh, ransack algorithm, uh, which is definitely the one you want to use. Uh, it's very robust uh, to filtering out uh, outliers left over from the matching process uh, computed above. And there's a little bit of code up here that requires us to change the format of the points so that um, to comply with the uh, this fine homography function. But that's um, that's a detail. The, the point here is that we can compute the homography from a set of uh, corresponding key points. And then finally, once we have uh, the homography H, which is a three by three matrix, we can uh, call this uh, function warp perspective on image two. And recall, image two was uh, the image of the um, filled out form sitting there on the table and uh, pass in the homography. And what we get back is the uh, registered or aligned image as shown below here to the right. So now we've, we've effectively changed the perspective of that image on the table and it's very closely aligned to the image on the form here. And now this is obviously a much simpler task to process, uh, you know, automatically process this form on the right. Uh, this form on the right can be compared to the form on the left, and an algorithm could be written to, um, it knows where the last name field is on the form, so then it can easily uh, recognize uh, these characters here as the last name of the person um, that has filled out the form. So that's one example of how you can use um, image alignment or image registration uh, and uh, there's many other applications, as we mentioned earlier. So you can see in very few lines of code, you can get this up and running. You can experiment with your own images, and uh, it's a lot of fun to do so, and we encourage you to, to um, explore that more. So we hope this was helpful to you, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.